Hi, everyone. Hello, all. In Ray Franz's chapter, Double Standards in Crisis of Conscience, uh, we're at page 133 now, the end of this chapter. He's summing up his conclusions about what all this means, Malawi, Mexico, and con self-contradictory policies. Mm -hmm. Is there anything consistent about this? And he nails what is consistent about it here. But he's drawing back the curtain, the watchtower curtain we, we alluded to before. And this time it's more than appropriate. If you know the, the plot of The Wizard of Oz, you know what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. You think, when you're a witness outside the curtain, on the other side of the curtain, mm -hmm. that at headquarters everybody's absolutely <coughs> got the truth and it's mm -hmm. you believe the, they the, the, the uniform the uniformity that you're expected to to mm -hmm. conform to yeah you expect that that comes straight from the top and yeah. yet behind the curtain ray says no the you, the governing body can be completely divided on issues and yet you're expected to comply with whatever policy is yeah. is dropped down from above on your locality that's mm -hmm. the contradiction that's built in because the localities, of course, in this particular case, are two very large countries with a lot of brothers suffering, mm -hmm. whether being thrown in jail in Mexico or being killed and raped in Malawi. So he, he says, since they know of this arrangement, some governing body members may have been inclined to accept the paying of bribes for falsified documents as being not far out of line with the overall policy for Jehovah's Witnesses in that country. This may explain, in part, how they could at the same time speak so adamantly for no compromise in other lands. It seems evident that in the minds of some members it is not a question of a double standard. In their minds there is just the one standard. Note this carefully. That standard is, and he has italics here, doing whatever the organization decides and approves. The organization made decisions regarding Mexico and the practice of bribing there, leaving it to the individual conscience, and so that is acceptable, and a man can pay such bribe for a military certificate and still be used in the most responsible way with no need for particular concern before God on the part of those directing the work there. The organization decided otherwise regarding alternative service, as it also did regarding the situation in Malawi, and so any man who fails to follow that decision is unworthy of occupying any position at all in the congregation, is in fact a breaker of integrity with God. Mm. I could not understand then how Christians could adopt such a viewpoint, and I cannot understand it now. For me, it made all the bold, almost strident, calls of some for staying clean from the world sound hollow, like mere rhetoric, as impressive language that did not fit reality. I could not relate in any way to the reasoning that allowed for such expressions in the face of facts that were well known to all members, speaking and hearing the, those expressions. I lived in Latin American countries for nearly 20 years and paid no bribes, but I know full well that there are some places, not just in Latin America, but in various parts of the earth, where, although the law is on your side and what you seek is perfectly legitimate, it is almost impossible to get certain things done without money being paid to an official who has no right to such. It is not hard to see that a person confronted with this situation may view this as a form of extortion, even as in Bible times, tax collectors and also military men might exact more than was due and thus pra practice extortion. It does not seem fair to me to judge adversely persons who feel obligated to, uh, no, it's, it's obliged to submit to such ex extortion. More than that, I am not presuming to judge those in Mexico who, not having the law on their side, acted against the law, who did not simply submit to extortion, but instead deliberately solicited 
Solicited? Oh, solicited. Sorry. I'm not a great reader. Sorry. Solicit solicited? Mm -hmm. The illegal actions of an official through an offer of money to get a falsified illegal document. This is not what I find so shocking and even frightening about the whole affair. It is instead the way that men in high authority can allow supposed organizational interests to be counted as of such enormous importance as compared to the interests of ordinary people, people with children and homes and jobs, individuals many of whom give evidence of being every bit as conscientious in their devotion to God as any man among those men who sit at a, as a court to decide what is said and what is and what is not within the realm of conscience for such people. It is men in authority who accord to themselves the right to be of divided opinion, but who exact uniformity from all others, men who express mistrust of others' use of Christian freedom of conscience, but who expect such others to put implicit trust in them and their decision, while they grant to themselves the right to exercise their conscience to condone illegal maneuvering, an obvious misrepresentation of fact. It is men in authority who, because the change of one vote reduces a majority down from 66 and two-thirds percent to 62 and a half percent, are willing to allow this to keep in force a policy that can cause other men to undergo arrest, be mm. separated from family and home for months, even sent to jail for years when those men do not understand the scriptural basis for the policy they are asked to follow and in some cases believe that the policy is wrong. Mm. It is men in authority who can apply a policy that calls on ordinary people, men, women, and children, to face loss of home and lands, beatings, torture, rape, and death because of refusal to pay a legal fee for the card of the organization that is, to all intents and purposes, the ruling power of their country, while at the same time telling men in another country that is, it is acceptable for them to bribe military officers for a card that falsely says they fulfilled their military service and are in the first reserves of the army. All this is what I find shocking. And however sincere some may be, I still find it frightening. I could not personally comprehend how grown men could fail to see inconsistency in all of this, could fail to be repelled by it, could not be deeply moved by its effect on people's lives. In the end, it simply convinced me that organizational loyalty can lead people to incredible conclusions, allow them to rationalize away the grossest of inequities, relieve them from being particularly affected by any suffering their policies may cause. The insensitizing effect that the organizational loyalty can, can produce is, of course, well documented having been demonstrated in, again and again throughout the centuries, both in religious and political history, as in the extreme cases of the Inquisition and during the Nazi regime. But it can still produce a sickening effect when seen at close quarters, in an area where one never expected it. To my mind, it illustrates forcefully the reason why God never purpose that men should exercise such excessive authority over fellow humans. That's the end of the chapter. Yeah. So, the video that we did prior to this that was about the misuse of authority and how JW leaders waffle behind this curtain that separates them from all other Jehovah's Witnesses, yet they expect uniformity of all members. Mm -hmm. They expect loyalty from all members, despite their <clears throat> their division, which is hidden from the average JW until you read a book like this. 
Yeah. And that prior video was on one specific issue, which is being debated at the governing body level at the very same time as they're talking about the Malawi and Mexico. And that issue was this generation. They waffled on what the definition of generation was, is. And of course, they have changed it since. They didn't change it then, though, although they argued about it and came up with other mm -hmm. suggestions and options mm -hmm. at the time. Mm -hmm. So check this video out where Ray Franz goes into that behind the curtain uh, uh, sequence of events that mm. was hidden from the JW public until Ray Franz expose this book. Mm. See you next time. Bye.